Howdy. Thanks for tuning in. And thanks to the subscribers, the viewers, and all the supporters. Very much appreciate it. Hey, this is uh, Gold Treasures Adventures and Outdoors vlog number lucky 13. And uh, I'm looking forward to showing you what happened on this trip. My name's Aaron, and we're going to go out and uh, do some desert plaster gold sampling with the dry washer and a little bit of metal detecting out there for some treasures in an old mining area and uh, so stick around you can see what I found in eight different samples with the dry washer in two different areas and also the treasures I found with the detector thanks a lot please like comment and subscribe uh, down below and uh, see you soon. Good morning. All right, thanks for coming along. This is sort of an unexpected um, uh, video about this trip in particular. Wasn't really planning on doing a video about the trip. Uh, in fact, the first day I didn't really do any filming at all. 
took a few photographs, but really didn't do any filming. And uh, it wasn't until the second day when I started doing some sampling with the dry washer, I realized I had limited time out here and uh, I didn't want to continue to pan and my concentrates and then decide if I was going to dig more or, or, or uh, move to another area. So that's a very time consuming process. And um, so on the day two, which was yesterday, what I decided to do was uh, just sample. I wanted to sample four different locations, but I ended up sampling three. So I got three really good samples from from these areas. And I gathered up all those concentrates, labeled them, got them in the truck here. I'll be going through those as soon as I can after I get home. So that way I'll learn a lot more about that area. I've only been, this is, this is only the second time I've been there. So I'll learn a lot more about that area for next time. Now here's day three and um, I'm on a new area, it's a new area to me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna survey the claim and I'm gonna decide on two or three or possibly four locations to uh, sample with the dry washer. I'll get a little bit of footage doing that. And, uh, but th the process is the same for every location. So you gotta understand, I'm just not gonna film each time. I'll film a little bit, uh, one or two and uh, and then I'll bring those concentrates home. I'm going to be leaving this afternoon sometime. Perhaps I'll stay out here till dark or till about dark and then I'll head out. But we'll see how it goes. Still have plenty of water and I've got some I've got some good food and I still have some ice in the cooler. So um, but supplies are running low and so I want to get uh, get out of here today for sure. And uh, thanks a lot for coming along. I hope uh, those of you who are interested, I hope you're learning something. And thank you for all the positive feedback. And uh, thank you for leaving comments. I really appreciate it. It helps the channel. Uh, if you give it a thumbs up, if you leave your comments down below, and the more subscribers to the channel, the better for the channel. So uh, once again, thanks very much and uh, have a great day. Hey, all right. Uh, I'll show you where I'm at right now. Did just finished the first sample, and you can see right behind me here. There's one of the majestic and uh, medicinal creosote bushes. Anyway, I'll show you where I'm at, and uh, I'll turn the camera around. Got a nice breeze now. It's pretty nice out. All right, here we go. That's a half hour run and basically you know I'm in an area where I have never prospected or mined before so I'm doing the best I can to try and isolate and determine if there's any gold in here at all I use an old iPhone like this here for my timer so it's a half hour run and the majority of the run was right here I cut across the whole the whole drainage and uh, Dug down fairly deep. I dug down through at least four different layers. I want to see if there's any color in this at all. I also over here did a little bit of scratching around some rocks, and in this uh, in this area right here where the the drainage sort of levels out a bit, a lot of these more gravelly sized stones start dropping out in here. So I wanted to get a sample along there, cross section good cross section here and then up through here I just took some random shovelfuls that I thought were well placed here's a little stone I got behind the stone I got a few shovels out of there and basically that's just a check to see after I get home and I'll, I'll label this bag half an hour and uh, and where I where it is and you can see here um, that's a half hour's worth of uh, of head, header pile and, and tailing pile over here. So, all right, more to come later. I'm going to hit the next area now. 
and I decided against an hour each. I'm just doing a half an hour each, but I'm trying to make it a pretty thorough uh, wide spectrum sample. So, all right, more to come. Thank you. show you here uh, 30 minutes 30 minutes with the dry washer and you know I'm guessing it's probably about a wheel like a full wheelbarrow could be more could be even a like one and a half or two wheelbarrows kind of depends upon certain factors it depends on the type of material you're running depends on how hard it is to break it up and shovel it and that half hour so that half hour is different uh, it also depends on how, what kind of heavies are in the uh, what kind of heavies are in the earth there's a number of factors but basically I run all that material and I end up with a riffle tray full of the heaviest elements and the larger pieces of rock the larger pieces of rock are competing with the heaviest elements and so that's that what's what happens that right there is going to amount to I'll show you in a second here after I run it through the classifier it's going to amount to about half of a quart Ziploc and that's the kind of neat thing about the dry washer you can come out to an area like this you can do a lot of shoveling get your exercise and you bring out very small amount compared to the amount of material that you run as you can see now looking back over here at the at the excavation you can see I pretty well followed the contour of the bedrock and you know what I'm not vacuuming it I'm not scraping it any cleaner than it is that's a half hour and you can see those uh, trumpet plants right there again but see that's a half an hour and that's a pretty darn good sample of this location and I don't need to vacuum. I don't need to go any further than that right now. Just need to bag up these concentrates. And then uh, I got one more spot at least, hopefully two, that I'm going to sample on this area. So I'll show you this a little clean out process here right now. I got my two buckets and a quarter inch classifier screen and in my pocket I always have my little brush so I'll show you why I have two buckets tray comes out like so put the classifier on the bucket everything goes on to the classifier try not to do it when the wind is really strong because last night we had 30 mile an hour winds and that's enough to blow gold right out of your tray if it's small enough. This is particularly important right now because we need to we need to uh, determine if there's gold here. We need to determine if there is gold one and two. If it's only fine gold, 
we need to make sure we capture it so that we know it would, it's here or not. The larger gold is easier to find. It's easier, it's harder to lose. And then I've used the brush to brush out this little bit of grit in here. And pop it back in. And I'm ready to run again. But now what I do here is I take this take this material here, usually I have a glove on one of my hands. And I grind it all together against that screen break up any dirt clods and I take that material now that's all the quarter inch plus I take that and I go over that with my metal detector see if I find any nuggets now if I find a nugget then alarm bells go off because then this is a real interesting area real interesting and all the time I've been doing this I've only found a nugget in the oversize twice so it's pretty rare, it's extremely rare to find chunky gold like that. But I don't discard it, I look at it first. There's a reason why it, it stayed in the riffle tray, opposed to all this other material. There's a reason for that. So I'd usually take a quick look at that with the metal detector. And the rest of this material here, these, this, is a, this is one tray of concentrates right here from a half an hour of digging, I label my bag, usually beforehand. You really want to get that dust in there too, because that could be, that might be the type of gold that's here. I don't know. So anyway, See that got a label on here <laughs> got to kind of cover up part of it but anyway um, you can see you take a, a wheelbarrow and a wheelbarrow and a half I don't know close to maybe two wheelbarrow fulls and you end up with a bag of concentrates like that from dry washing so I never really see anything in here. I always look for it. I never really see anything. But um, yeah, take this home. I'll process it very carefully. And then uh, I'll know whether there's gold in that spot or not when I come out next time. So there you go. Thanks for watching. All right. Uh, getting ready to head out on out of here. Uh, sun's going down probably in another another hour or so. And I'm leaving towards the end of the day as a, as a way of getting around some of that traffic on the way home. So doing good. Uh, real nice, real nice couple days. Uh, three days, two nights. Um, I'd finished those samples here at the new area. Really looking forward to processing those and seeing what's in, what's in, if any color, what size is the color. Certainly there's been a lot of work here over the years, over the decades, but not really a lot of big time work. So it's kind of a puzzle. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Please uh, subscribe and like and uh, comment on the video. Appreciate it. Sorry about the wind. I'm going to show you what I found after I finished that last area. You didn't see that one on film, but after I finished the last one, I uh, did a little bit of metal detecting just for kicks and to relax a little bit and just a change of pace. And I'll show you what I found there. Um, all right, thanks a lot. All right, here's the finds. 
walked around for probably an hour and a half and uh, there's obviously multiple my mi old mining camps around here and didn't find anything really yet spectacular but I did find some old school pull tabs uh, here's a slug from here's a here's a slug from a bullet here's a casing from a bullet and uh, some other non non ferrous some sort of an ID tag ID tag, uh, some shells from other bullets. So, not a whole lot of trash, but um, I was discriminating out the iron, you know, so that helps a lot. Anyway, hope you all are doing well and take care out there. See you on the next one. All right, back here, I wanted to show you, these are all the concentrates that I brought home from that, la that, that uh, last trip, that real good sampling trip. These are, for, these are uh, concentrates from two places where I'd really, really never done very much work out there. And one of the locations I'd never been to before ever, and the other one was just a short trip. So since I was out there and uh, both the areas are reported to have uh, you know, fair to good gold. Um, I didn't really know where to start, so I just wanted to do a sampling. So what I've got here is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Real good samples. This represents 10 minutes shy of six hours of dry washing time. And that's that's not including uh, you know, all the other time to camp out there, drive out, move the equipment around. Um, this is just actually shoveling into the machine while it was running time. I've got the location of every one of these areas written on the other side of the bag. Just for the video, I turned them all over and I wrote down the actual duration of uh, processing time to, to get this amount of concentrates. So this is a typical amount of concentrates that my riffle tray holds. And after I shut off the machine for a half an hour, I end up with about half of a quart, maybe a little bit more than a half of a quart bag. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna process all of these bags the same way, and I'm gonna see what kind of gold is in each one of these locations. And uh, that'll help me next time I want to go out there a great deal. One other thing I wanted to mention is that it's helpful if you do a timed run because you can compare one area to the next. I worked a half, I dug for a half, I shoveled for a half an hour here, I shoveled for a half an hour here and here. So now I can compare the different quantities of return of gold. So same thing with these. This will give me a good idea about when and if I go back to those areas where I want to focus my efforts and my time. And these are all quarter inch minus classified um, concentrates from the riffle tray. And I've already gone through the oversized, the quarter inch plus, and I found no gold. I did find a couple pieces of lead, but no gold in that. So this is just showing you the way it, you know, the way I bring the concentrates home. And since it's, in, since it's really two areas where I've never done much work at all, um, the best use of my time out there was to do some serious sampling. I did do a little panning while I was out there, but I quickly decided not to do too much panning. It just takes too much time out of the day. So this is a good representation of what I would bring home and then go through to decide where to go on a future trip or where not to go on a future trip. All right, so I'll be back with some results for every one of these separate eight spots. And uh, it should be interesting. Thanks for coming along.
so you see there definitely is gold out in them thar hills prospecting is a key when you're in a new area sometimes even when you're in an area that you've been to year after year prospecting is the key to finding where the color is i hope you enjoyed this gtao vlog number 13 check out our website to learn more to buy pay dirts, to buy concentrates. All the support helps uh, to fund more trips and make videos. It's all very much appreciated. You can find uh, the information on the website. You can also find more information in the uh, description down below in the video, for the video. Add your questions, your comments, your suggestions below in the comment section, please. And uh, all the feedback is appreciated. Thanks for coming along. And until next time, friends, stay well.